That's what I realized. I realized that President Zuma needs money for his legal fees. So I approached Dali and Pofu. I said, Dali, my brother, uh, you are now my best friend. From now on, I will take care of the legal fees of Nkandla. So, on your legal background, please, please, please answer this question. So we heard Mr. Malema saying that um, he's instructed his lawyers to attach uh, uh, former President Jacob Zuma's homestead because of the legal fees that they owe them. How do you respond to this? Well, the law hey, what's going on, peeps? Welcome to it, man. It's another episode of the Free Ride Podcast. Uh, my name is Sipo Masiho, and of course, today I'm just going to focus on a very big celebration that took place in Fos Loras. And of course, uh, this is after the MK celebrated its first birthday. And of course, I listened to the speeches. I, in fact, listened to Jacob Zuma's speech. Okay, I did fall asleep a bit, but I did listen to him because Bega Kuluma Isi Zulu. Like Isi Zulu Sagababa and Jesia Shis and Je Ile Samampela Mpela. So I tried because Nakimoto Anakir, Janu, Hakutu Little Musu, Kabe Kutu Little, Mate Dinte Hakim Present. But I listened. So anyway. Some of the things that I really took out from Ubaba was quite interesting, <laughs> you know. Um, I mean, he talked about a whole lot of things about black unity, about these parties coming together. He's talking about the ruling of uh, these kings uh, ruling South Africa and, of course, uh, giving them more power. And uh, that was part of their manifestos. I mean, he spoke at length. So I'm going to read just some things that I really, really want to take you through. OK, uh, so so first of all, MK Party leader Jacob Zuma uh, was addressing hundreds of MK Party supporters in Fort Loras, east of Johannesburg, in celebration of their party's first anniversary. So MK Party leader Jacob Zuma is confident his party can win the vote rigging case against the Electoral Commission of South Africa, IEC, after obtaining credible information. So Ubaba is still on this case about this thing. Um, we know how it all went down. So he's probably wants to pursue it again. So Zuma, after the 29th of uh, May elections, claimed the elections were rigged accusing the IEC officials of stealing MK votes and donating them to other parties. Despite the public statements, the MK withdrew the case uh, at the Electoral Court in October, saying it needed more time to mull over its evidence. Addressing the party supporters at the MKP's first anniversary celebrations at Fos Loras, on Saturday, Zuma spent much of his time assuring MK members of the takeover. The people are in charge of counting votes, took our votes and gave them to other parties. They deprived us of a two thirds majority. We wanted to lead the country. Uh, we, if we took over, there would be no poverty. We have a lot of credible information. We have all the information as to what happened and who stole our votes. We have started again with a court case, Zuma said to the cheering of his party supporters. Uh, he said the electoral court would find in the MK's favor and a lot of people will be found guilty. Despite MKP breaking a 30 year record uh, when it contested national and provincial elections for the first time in May 29th elections by obtaining attaining more than 2 million votes. 
Zuma believes the party won the majority votes. We cannot be robbed from leading our country, but the court must talk and reveal the truth. It must show we won elections. Once that is done, we must take over the country. That is our mandate. We cannot compromise. We are close to taking over. Once we win the case, we are taking over. The IEC dismissed claims by the MKP saying the party has failed to produce evidence to back up their accusations. MKP repeatedly attacked the IEC after it barred Zuma from taking part in the elections because of his criminal convictions. In 2020, Zuma was sentenced to 15 months imprisonment by the Constitutional Court. Uh, for contempt of court, the Constitution prohibits anyone sentenced to more than 12 months imprisonment without the option of a fine uh, from becoming an MP. In court papers, the MKP said the Commission had no business upholding constitutional provisions and blocking Zuma's nomination to stand for Parliament due to the sentence. Remember, Zuma was not in prison for 12 months. It was only for like three months or so. That's what I realized. I realized that President Zuma needs money for his legal fees. So I approached Dali and Pofu. I said, Dali, my brother, uh, you are now my best friend. From now on, I will take care of the legal fees of Nkandla. So the next thing is the, the sheriff pitched up two of them at Nkandla, wanting to take Nkandla back wanting to take the two Ngunis that I gave to him as a gift on the day, wanting to take his furniture and wanting to take Nkandla. They were even having arguments with the Ngunyama Trust. And I think a lot of the fights then later with the king and with Putulezik flowed from that. For a while, I didn't know what to do. All I knew, I had to help. So I paid VBS Bank I paid seven and a half million to the attorney. I so, um, interestingly, there were a couple of interviews that I saw online that uh, some of the MKP leaders did online. And of course, uh, the first one uh, that I want you to have a look at is uh, definitely a, a, an interesting interview from the Mzwanele Manye who then, um, uh, you know, of course, there was another interview that was done by um, uh, the um, uh, Ubaba, uh, what's his name, the, the, the lawyer, the judge, the advocate, Dalimpofu, Dalimpofu. And of course, uh, it was uh, in response to uh, a question uh, about what uh, EFF leader Julius Malema said in the week around... Uh, the issues of um, uh, attaching Nkandla from uh, Jacob Zuma because Jacob Zuma owes them um, fees. Uh, they took Jacob Zuma. Remember, Julius Malema said, we took Jacob Zuma to court. We fought him. We won. And he owes us money. We said, no, we'll let it go. But now he wants his money back. He wants his money back. Pay back the money, he says. Now, what did he say he did? He told and instructed his lawyers that his lawyers must go and attach Jacob Zuma's Nkandla homestead. Can you believe it? How do you go and suggest such a thing? Jacob Zuma. I mean, Julius Malema. You won't get much out of it. But anyway, let's see how Jacob Zuma responds to that issue. But in fact, Let's listen to how Talimpo for response to that issue. On your legal background, please, please, please answer this question. Yeah. So we heard Mr. Malema saying that um, he's instructed his lawyers to attach a, a former president Jacob Zuma's homestead because of the legal fees that they owe them. How do you respond to this? Well, the law will take its course. We are a, a party that is law abiding. Uh, we have said in all our statements that uh, uh, the Umkonto of 1961 used the bullet. Ours is to use the ballot, so uh, they must uh, bring it on. One of the things 
we've seen in this country is that with the GNU, the collaboration between parties. Um, and, and previously, we had seen also the talks between EFF and MK and, and so on. Will you then be looking into that collaboration going forward in the local government? Yeah, no, look, firstly, let's just accept that two things. One, it's important also for the media to interrogate this thing called GNU. There's not GNU, it's a coalition. It's a DA-led coalition of this government. The ANC is actually being driven by the, by the DA. You can see with the Bella bill that if the ANC was truly in charge, we'd be having this unnecessary delay on implementing all the sections uh, in the law of the Bella Act. As it were, the fact that that is not happening is because the ANC is being pulled by the nose uh, by the DA. So that's what's happening on that point. So it must be clear, it's not a GNU, it's a coalition, but it's led by the DA. That's the first thing. Indeed, we want to collaborate with the EFF and all other progressive forces, uh, but we still remain different political uh, organizations on the ground. So we have our different programs. So sometimes in the rhetoric, you may think we're fighting. We're not actually fighting. It's just everyone uh, just wants to make sure that those that appeal to their brand of revolutionarism, uh, that they get those, and those that appeal uh, to what the MK party is uh, vouching for, then they've got a home. At the end of the day, we'll put all of these things together and ensure that uh, we have the more than two-thirds majority. And I think we're very much uh, uh, along, uh, very much uh, uh, on track in terms of that. In Parliament, the Progressive Caucus is doing very well. We support each other and all of that. So some of these uh, things that happen on the ground, don't take them to heart. It's just politics. All right, uh, so you heard for yourself, man. Uh, let's listen to um, another video uh, that was uh, done by Mzwane Lenyimanyi about um, the celebrations. And of course, also listen to the Secretary General of the um, MKP, Floyd Chivambo, as he um, uh, highlights some of, uh, um, you know, what the day was all about. Let's take a listen to this. And when we come back, the next story that I want to focus on is another story around uh this particular issue the um KZN KZN Khotlati Khotlati Dingangara the the Dinkabi the biggest one of them all the biggest mobster of them all the biggest boss in the continent the biggest boss lady Kimam Keys and of course SARS went and seized um some documents and some rifles we'll take a look at that story when we come back take a listen to the MKP. Um, when the EFF actually marched to the constitutional courts on Tuesday, um, the leader of your former political home, Mr. Julius Malema, said that the agenda of the MK party is to destroy uh, the EFF. How do you respond to such claims? I honestly did not see that. I did not see him saying that. Okay, I'm telling you now. So I, I, I'm, I'm not even aware of that. The, but one thing which we know is that Mkondo is not existing to destroy any political party. We are appealing to majority of the voters of South Africa. I mean, there is no need to destroy uh, the economic freedom fighters. No, the, 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 the MK can get two-thirds of majority in terms of the vote in South Africa without taking a single vote from the EFF. The EFF was not voted by 91% of the people of South Africa. So there is no need to co concentrate our energy in trying to uh, destroy uh, the economic freedom fighters. Our focus is to persuade a majority of the people of South Africa, but is to persuade a lot of progressive forces to associate with the Mkonto season. And we are successfully doing such, and because that is the agenda that we think we should consolidate on. We are not in the business of destroying uh, political parties. Those who join Mkonto season, whether they were members of the ANC or EFF or DA or ATM or what, whatever organization, they do so out of their own political consciousness. These are adults who, who, who fall into superior alternatives. They realize that there is a proper vehicle that is assembling the best of the best. Let us associate with it instead of existing in small and viable fiefdoms that have got no potential, none whatsoever. 
to could win electoral power in South Africa. So we're in no business to try to, to, to destroy any uh, organization as um, on What we know though is that we're going to unite the majority of the people of South Africa. We're going to unite more than two-thirds of the voters of South Africa behind the banner of Umkonto Wesizo, uh, which is going to take over political power in local government, will take over political power at national level on behalf of the people so that we can drive through a thoroughgoing transformation agenda to empower our people. <laughs> So it turns out that uh, Mam Kiza owed Saz some money and of course um, Saz was keeping tabs on her, tried to do follow-ups with her. There was no cooperation from Mam Kiza because of whatever reason it was. Um, so uh, now Saz uh, went ahead and I want to take you through the story because it's crazy, man. You must never mess around with the tax man. Never mess around with the tax man. So... The story says more than 40 firearms ranging from rifles to pistols uh, as well as ammunition were found in the safe uh, in a house in the affluent Durban suburbs of La Lucia belonging to a flamboyant business person and football Sean, uh, football boss Sean Mamkize. Uh, Mkize, uh, the firearms and ammunition were found uh, by the Hawks the um, SA Police Service, uh, um, SA Police Service and SA Re Reserve Bank officials, uh, who raided the house, uh, on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, the officials had to use the services of a locksmith to bypass the security of the safe and access the firearms and a number of documents, all of which were confiscated. Another um, possessions uh, seized in the raid were luxury vehicles worth about 22 million, including a Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, a Ferrari, a Maserati, and a Rolls-Royce Ghost. The, the vehicles will be stored by a curator pending the finalization of the tax inquiry into the family's businesses. Uh, the vehicles will be auctioned off uh, if the taxman does not get the 20 the 37 million that SARS is demanding from Mamki. 37 million. That's the amount of tax she owes. Now, how much money did this woman make? Oh, that's crazy. Um, so last Thursday, uh, without informing Mamkiza's lawyers, the revenue collectors uh, approached the Durban High Court for a search warrant, uh, which was granted. The move followed attempts by SARS to get cooperation from Mamkiza and her son Andile to hand over documents required by in the tax inquiry. According to sources close to the investigations, the firearms uh, that were found belong to a well-known former presidential protection services police officer uh, turned taxi boss. Hey! Ha! KZN! Who provides security services for the troubled uh, business person, uh, the taxi boss whose uh, taxis operate within the Durban region, uh, who owns a security company, VVIP Protection and VIP Security. Um, it declined to comment on the issue of the firearms kept, kept at Mom Keezer's home. The taxi boss um, whose um, the taxi boss uh, whose name is known to the publication, undertook to talk to the newspaper an hour later. But when called, uh, his mobile phone had been switched off. So those are the news that are happening in KZN and, of course, uh, the party from KZN, MKP. And, of course, as Floyd has been saying, that uh, the MKP is not just a Zulu nationalist party. It's a party for all people. So, But we all know that it's founded in... In uh, KZN, led by a man from KZN, and of course, if you listen very attentively to how President Zuma addressed the crowd, it was all Kasizulu. So, 
you know, Floyd was the only one in Lohari who was multitasking. So there we go, man. I want you to check out um, uh, maybe one or two things um, about Mamkize. Let's go. But then um, I'm signing out, man. Thank you very much for watching, for liking, for sharing, for commenting. Damn, you guys have been amazing. And of course, I have enjoyed all your comments and all your, um, yeah, your engagement with me on the platforms and, uh, on TikTok, on YouTube, you, your numbers were just absolutely insane in terms of your correspondence with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for always appreciating the content that I'm trying to create for you. Thank you for watching the As you podcast. have already Let's mentioned, go. we have been stationed outside the home for a number of hours now. Uh, I just want to go back to what we saw uh, earlier on. So we saw quite a bit of heavy police presence at this particular home that is uh, behind me. As you stated, this is the home of the uh, businesswoman, uh, Sean Mkize. Now, what we saw saw uh, earlier on was that there was one official that uh, exited the residence and what she had uh, in her hand was a file. After her, there was a SARS official that also exited this particular uh, residence and he had uh, pocket sleeves uh, in, pack, uh, sorry, plastic sleeves in his hand um, that had a number of documents. Now, uh, we do know that, uh, as you've already mentioned, this is uh, something that has been going on for quite some time now uh, between SARS and uh, Sean Mkize. Earlier on, again, Goli, uh, we did see a company uh, that was here at this particular residence. It was, in fact, a locksmith uh, company. Now, there were questions regarding what it is a locksmith's company could be doing at this particular uh, residence. We did inquire about what they were doing, doing here. However, there was no information that uh, we received from them. However, we did see that there was a uh, heavy equipment or tools that were taken in this particular house that is behind me. We also saw the uh, now ex-husband uh, of Sean Mkize, uh, Sboom Bisani, who was standing on his balcony. Uh, we did not, however, see uh, Sean Mkize during this raid. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, there are, there are quite a number of allegations uh, when you are talking about about Sean Mkize. Uh, just recently, it was reported a while ago, rather, it was reported uh, that uh, that uh, soccer team, a Royal AM football club, uh, was sponsored by the Sunduzi municipality, um, and there were funds that they were given that were given to this particular um, football club. However, there was a public outcry coming from a lot of people asking questions in terms of how the Sunduzi municipality was able to give uh, or to sponsor this particular football club because they are failing in terms of service delivery. Again, as you mentioned, there have been a number of reports when you are talking uh, about allegation in terms of tax evasion. Even just recently, a couple of months ago, there were additional reports uh, that were reported on by a number of uh, media outlets uh, stating that uh, Sean Mkiza does allegedly owe SARS uh, 37 uh, a million. Uh, however, it was also stated that she could possibly lose 13 of her luxury cars. However, SARS, of course, uh, did not uh, confirm this particular number as they do not uh, divulge that particular information. And lastly, Akoli, if you look at that particular uh, statement that was, uh, you know, released by uh, SARS, uh, we do understand that this particular uh, operation was granted by the KwaZulu Natal a local division of the Durban High Court. This is a case that was against the uh, SARS commissioner and uh, Sean Mkize and others. We were told that they were looking for evidence that can be potentially uh, linked uh, to uh, tax uh, evasion. And also they were looking for assets, Goli, uh, that can, and they were trying to prevent the selling of those assets when they are trying to get back uh, that money that uh, you know, could potentially be owed to SARS. So we don't really uh, have, uh, you know, that information in terms of tangible uh, assets that were taken from this particular house. However, we do know that there were a number of documents uh, that were taken out of the residence by SARS officials.
Slatiw and Lovo, thank you very much for that comprehensive update. Life for us outside the Durban home of Sean Mkise.